Behind me, above all these PCs, is my first computer, the Acorn A4000. An impressive device with an even more impressive legacy that probably lives on in your pocket. Allow me to explain. The year is 1992. Dr. Spinner's in the charts with Tetris, John Major wins a general election, and in the world of tech, Microsoft releases Windows 3.1. We're going to be looking at the Archimedes range of computers. That's what the A stands for in A4000. Although this video is based around the A4000, we'll be looking at the legacy of the Archimedes series and how the spirit of which is still with us today. 1978, Acorn Computers was founded. It went on to produce the world's first commercial arm chip. Arm was spun out into its own company, and the revolutionary tech that was in the A4000 can now be found everywhere. And I mean everywhere. The reason I hold the A4000 in such high regard is due to Acorn's choice of processor. Acorn decided to design its own high-performance 32-bit RISC chip. I'm Sophie Wilson. I designed the ARM instruction set. I'm Steve Ferber. I'm one of the principal designers of the first ARM microprocessor. So this is the very first ARM, the 1985 ARM. This was the dawn of the ARM processor. In 1983, the Apple Lisa had showed the Acorn engineers that they needed to develop a windowing operating system. To achieve this, Acorn would need a new architecture. Acorn had investigated all the readily available processors and found them lacking. We were looking around for a processor to replace the 6502, which was in the BBC computer, and that wasn't what we wanted. Inspired by the white papers based on the Berkeley RISC project, Acorn seriously considered designing its own processor. A visit to the Western Design Center in Phoenix, where the 6502 was being updated by what was effectively a single-person company in a bungalow in the suburbs. We came away fairly convinced that if those guys were capable of designing a processor, anybody could showed Acorn engineers Steve Ferber and Sophie Wilson that they did not need massive resources and state-of-the-art research and development facilities. In October 1983, Sophie Wilson began designing the instruction set for one of the first RISC processors, the Acorn RISC machine. The ARM-1 was delivered on the 26th of April 1985 and it worked first time. We didn't really expect to pull it off. We decided we'd better measure the power consumption. Steve approached the test board and put the meter across the links that would allow him to measure the processor power. And it was reading zero. The processor was actually running off the protection diodes. And I knew we'd designed a fairly low power chip, but this was um, a bit remarkable. This processor type was later to become one of the most successful licensed CPU architectures, and by 2012 was being used in 95% of smartphones. So, so far ARM have shipped about 50 billion powered ARM chips. So all of them are based on the same what you did back then? Most of them execute the classic ARM instruction set, um, which I designed the original one of. Early 8-bit microprocessors, like the Intel 8080, only had a few simple instructions. Working on the belief that hardware was fast but software was slow, subsequent microprocessor development involved providing processors with more instructions to carry out ever more complicated functions. This is what we call the CISC approach, Complicated Instruction Set Computer. This was a philosophy that Intel adopted and that more or less is still followed by today's latest iCore 7 processors. This move to increasingly complicated instructions came at a cost. So these complex instruction sets were really hurting the ability of these processors to handle real-time I.O. Although the first microprocessors could execute most of their instructions in just a handful of clock cycles, as processors became more complicated, significantly more clock cycles were required. In the early 1980s, a radically different philosophy called RISC, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. The acronym isn't quite correct. What it actually is, is Reduced Instruction Set Complexity Computer. According to this model of computing, processors would only have a few simple instructions, but as a result of this simplicity, those instructions would be super fast. So while much more of the work would have to be done in the software, an overall gain in performance would be achievable. The amazing thing about this machine is the speed of execution. Very, very, very much faster than everything else. This risk approach is what Acorn employed in the first ARM1 processor. Today's ARM processors are direct descendants of that original ARM chip, which was designed for the Acorn Archimedes back in 1987. This brings us to the Acorn Archimedes series of computers. 
The Archimedes was never as well known as its hugely successful predecessor, the BBC Micro, yet, without it, the ARM architecture would probably never have come into being and today's smartphones and tablets might boast Intel rather than ARM technology. So what was so special about this personal computer that it changed the face of the microelectronics industry? At first sight, the specifications don't sound particularly special. However, in comparison to most of the home computers of the day, which were little more than toys with cassette tapes and data storage, the Archimedes was much closer to what we think of as a proper PC. We built a thing called the ARM 250. ARM 250 was an ARM 2 plus the video controller, plus the I.O. controller, plus the memory controller, all in one piece of silicon. So that's the world's first system on a chip. Stop. That's huge. The system on the chip that Sophie's referring to is widely regarded as the next step of computing. Eventually, SOCs will almost completely consume CPUs, and that's what Acorn casually rolled out in 1992. Of course, the IBM PC and the Apple Mac were already available, and while these were undoubtedly serious computers, they had a price tag that, back in 1987, meant they were first and foremost business tools and rarely found their way into the home. What made the Archimedes stand out from anything else at the time with a similar price tag was its graphics. With a resolution of 640 by 256 with 256 colors, the Archimedes stood head and shoulders above the competition. Although games were few, they were generally best in class. To see a game that appeared to have an unlimited world to explore with actual structures, landmarks, destructible buildings and persistent decals, this is a release that is seriously ahead of its time. Elite on the Archimedes, also known as Arc Elite, is widely regarded as the best conversion of the game you can get, and it's pretty clear to see why. Even the IBM PC in 4 colour mode could only boast 320x200. And while Windows wouldn't become popular on the PC for another five years with the launch of Windows 3, at the outset the Archimedes could boast a graphical user interface. With a friendly interface known as WIMP, and that's operated by this gadget, which is called a mouse. And a mighty fine operating system it was. Now you might say, hey, most Atari STs had their operating system and GEM desktop built into ROM as well. Yeah, they did, but RISC OS was incredibly powerful and user friendly, sharing much in common with much later operating systems such as Windows 95. It was really very much ahead of its time. And this brings us back to that innovative 32 bit RISC ARM chip, without which the Archimedes high resolution graphics and GUI just wouldn't have been feasible. When I look at this unassuming beige box, I see it as the granddaddy of all our games consoles, personal media players, set-top boxes, home automation systems, GPS receivers, e-book readers, TV and Blu-ray players, digital cameras and everything else with a digital heartbeat. Part of this computer's legacy is probably in your pocket right now, and that's why it sits at the top of my cabinet. It never achieved the success it deserved during its life, but in its death, it conquered the world. <laughs>